Hi everyone. I am, as usual, going to take a minute to get started and share this on my personal page as well. So you can just perhaps bear with me for a moment as I take care of that. And um, then I will do my usual intro where um, I go over a few other things from last week and uh, remind and, and just say hello. So again, if you're just joining, take your time. Um, I'm trying to share this on my timeline. I assume this is okay. That did it. Go check it out. Yes, okay. So, for real hello now, and you um, may notice uh, that I'm in a slightly different location at the moment. I actually am setting up, or, or have set up mostly, for a party, a hockey party, hockey holiday party that I'm having this weekend. So, my usual uh, dining room table set up that I'm normally sitting at is, is not in its location today. So you're getting to see a little bit more of my living room. I'm in downtown Denver as usual. Hopefully we've been lucky so far and there hasn't been a whole lot of noise outside for most of these, but if you do hear any urban noises out there, that's why. And uh, we're finally having a little bit of a cold day. It's December 14th and it, we're finally hitting in the, I don't know, 30s or so today. And uh, we've, been, we've been mostly having weather in the 60s. So to all of my friends on the East Coast and other areas that are getting some winter, uh, I kind of miss it. I'm kind of hoping that by the time Christmas rolls around, things will be a little bit more uh, Christmassy here. And uh, again, I, if you don't know who I am, I have worked in the behavior change, corporate behavior change and wellness industries for over 20 years. And I am now a public speaker and a geek coach, but I have quite a bit of experience in helping, make, helping people make intelligent, small, actionable changes to their lives. And if that's something you might be interested in, I am also available for public speaking events and personal coaching. So uh, please feel free to contact me through Facebook or otherwise. And hello to Mark Strand. Thank you for joining. <laughs> I see see you there and I think I actually managed to go live today from the Insoma page and not my own so we'll um, hopefully that will uh, get this in the library for those of you who are watching it after the fact last week I talked about too many toys and especially during the holiday season as we're looking for gifts and we think more is better and uh, kids and all of us get excited about uh, all kinds of new purchases it's important to remember that having too many distractions around, too many toys, can have a detrimental effect, especially if you're a developing a child in the developing stage. But if you are even an adult and just trying to encourage yourself to think and uh, be more present and be more creative and be more focused, that the idea of even just having too many toys around um, can be counterproductive to some of the things you may want to accomplish in your life. So that was last week's topic and I talked about some interesting studies, particularly a German one where they went in and took all the toys away from the nursery. So, um, so if you're interested in that, you can go back and watch that one. But today I am talking about willpower depletion or another term for that is ego depletion. And there is a, uh, a theory that's long been around that, it, that, that the idea of self-control is based on how much willpower or ego you have. Uh, ego de so I'm, I'm using the word ego today, not in the Freudian sense. The ego um, in this sense is more of a, a term for how much self-awareness and how much ability you have to be present and control your actions rather than letting the primal part of your brain take over the decision making. So I think for today, 
even though that is technically a psychologically correct term in the, in the world of psychology for this, this phenomenon, ego depletion. So if you're interested in learning more, that, that's one term you can look up. I'm going to just call it willpower and willpower depletion today uh, because I just think that's a clearer, a clearer terminology for this phenomenon since ego can be used in other ways. So the idea of a de willpower depletion has long been a uh, theory of why self-control can be more, more difficult in certain situations than others. I want to start out by saying this is a, still a controversial theory, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as uh, towards later later in this discussion. But the idea is that this is a uh, this willpower is a limited resource, and it can be depleted, and then you need to do certain things to replenish it. So you can think of it like you know like a like any sort of muscle or energy that if you use more in one situation then you will have depleted it for whatever your, and it's not going to be the same for everyone in every situation, but ever, whatever your um, window is that you need to rest to replenish it. So this is where if you have had a hard, grueling, exhausting, draining day at the office, you may have had the best of intentions to get off work that day and go to the gym or go grocery shopping or do all sorts of productive things and you get done with that day and all you want to do at that point is go home, sit on the couch, eat junk food and watch TV. And this is not because you're not intelligent, your brain can still say like, hey, this is a terrible idea. This is not helping you meet your goals we really shouldn't be doing this, uh, it's destroying your body, all these things. So it's not that you're, you're unable to think about what you're doing, it's just that it, you're unable to have your actions match your intent at that point. So that's why it's really, it's willpower, and, and there's a lot that goes along with willpower around brain chemistry, and it's not intelligence that we're talking about here, or even desire. I mean, you may be able to sit there and say, well, I know if I eat this bag of potato chips, I am not gonna lose those five pounds that I really desire and I really want to do. So you're not even, it's not that you've lost sight of your goals, it's just you're in that state where for some reason, <laughs> you just can't get your actions to match your intent. Now, I wanna talk about a briefly, on a sort of a competing theory on this. And this is where there's an idea that the aspect of culture plays a role in, in how people react to having uh, denied themselves things. And there's a study done in India that there is a, a cultural belief in India that exercising self-control is actually energizing. So oftentimes we think of more um, religious you know, whether it's, it's monks or, or whatever sort of religious figure there might be, uh, using denial, self-denial as a form of, of um, austerity and I will be more present and such. So there is another idea that the more willpower and the more, the more um, you're acting against some of your primal instincts, that that can be spiritually and energetically rejuvenating. This is very specific at this point, and there may be other cultures, but as far as I'm aware in terms of scientific studies, very specific to the Indian culture. But keep in mind as we talk today about this idea of ego and, and willpower depletion, that if you look at some of the studies coming out of India, there's actually almost a flip-flop of the evidence that there's a case to be made that in that culture, um, denial and, and uh, willpower depletion can actually lead to feeling more spiritually energetic. However, in most cultures, American and European, that is not the trend that scientific studies are seeing. So for example, there was just recently a study released by Texas A&M that has thus far in Western cultures uncover the strongest evidence that ego, that willpower depletion, the willpower depletion effect is real. So what this study was able to analyze though 
is that this effect exists, but the exact mechanisms of why and how are still a bit unclear. So I think this is a fascinating topic, partly because it is still emerging science, and this isn't something that we have all the answers for yet, but it's obviously something that we've all experienced day to day, that we see in different situations with friends, uh, with family, if you're trying to accomplish goals, lose weight, all those things we think that are, are well, all those things that we want to do that are good for us, but maybe aren't always the most enjoyable, <laughs> process to get there. Uh, no doubt some of us have have uh, experienced ego depletion in some way or another, sorry, willpower depletion in some way or another during those processes to achieve those goals. So so this study was done at Texas A&M that, that really did, and I can put a link to it if this is something that interests you, and it's in, the study is in pre-release right now, so it's not fully peer-reviewed yet, but they have enough results that they felt like they were able to uh, make a strong enough conclusion that they felt comfortable um, sharing the results. So I'll, I can uh, link to some of the, those results in the comments of this. But as I said, they noticed that this effect appeared real in a large-scale, rigorously controlled study, but they were not totally able to answer the why and the how of the mechanisms in terms of when this is happening. So is it, for example, that we're running out of this reservoir of self-control is it there, there are certain sets of circumstances that just lead us to having low or no motivation, like we lose sight of the end goal, it seems too far off, or is it a matter of energy conservation? Because if you look at this from an evolutionary perspective, we really are fighting against evolutionarily what's best for ourselves. So obviously the idea, especially in the dark and winter and cold times when food is scarce is it's a really good idea to be sitting on your couch eating Twinkies because you want to store up all those calories for survival. Well, we all know that that's not the, not the uh, prime thing that we're struggling with for most of us today in today's world. So truly the idea of, of this willpower is we're, we're directly going against our best evolutionary um, in instincts to accomplish things that are more appropriate for today's society. So the study didn't really go into exactly the mechanism of why we tend to have this depleted willpower, but it did uncover the fact that for most people, this, most cultures, this effect is real. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my perspective on what I've experienced in coaching and working with people and certainly what I've seen for myself. I would love to hear in the comments and from anyone watching if what your experience has been or your challenges have been around this. But because willpower goes directly against evolutionary instincts for survival, for energy conservation, this actually takes quite a bit of brain energy to tamp down those intuitive and emotional responses. So obviously you walk by something that looks delicious to you. For me it's more like potato chips and brie and French bread and I'm trying to lose weight. Well, my first instinct is, heck yeah, I want to eat all those things and this is a party and I should be having fun and why would I deny myself? That's my evolutionary response. My body wants those calories, my body sees those foods as being, uh, whether it's emotional comfort or, or um, hike, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to be hibernating for the winter, obviously. <laughs> but I have to stop that process and rethink and create new neural pathways that say, wait a minute, that's exactly what the primal instincts are telling me to do, but I'm not that, I'm not in that situation now. So this activates quite a few neural pathways and uses up neurochemicals these chemicals and these need to be renewed, regenerated. So similar to exercise, cognitive exhaustion is a real thing. I'm sure you've all experienced it. So it can be just as real in decision making as it is in um, processing difficult to, to uh, figure out problems, logic, and so on. And so all of these, these neurochemicals that are used to make your brain run are interrelated in decision making and in willpower and so on. So if you think of it, <laughs> I've, I've always loved this quote about exercise, if you think of it a little bit like exercise, 
if it's easy, it's not exercise. <laughs> exercise, by, I mean, it might be fun, but exercise by definition is work, is exhausting, and that's the way your body and your muscles build up more. So if you think about it in terms of your brain and your decision making, if you're doing exhausting thinking, whether that's for long periods of time or difficult problem solving, then it is depleting those, those chemicals and um, exhausting those processes. So, and you do need time to rejuvenate them. So during this time of year, we're all put into situations that typically we aren't the rest of the year. It might be being completely out of your normal routine, having to make decisions about what to buy other people, constantly thinking about people and people's needs other than your own and your immediate family as you're shopping, as you're donating, as you're volunteering your time. So when you start to think about the variety of unique situations that most of us are in during this time of year, and the cultural shifts that happen from what we usually are uh, focused on from day to day, no wonder it becomes cognitively and neurally exhausting just to exist through the holidays. So keep in mind that all of a sudden, most of us go, and if we think of it in terms of exercise, you know, from maybe going for a walk once a day, and then all of a sudden during the holidays, cognitively, and um, analogously, it's like we're running a marathon for weeks on end. So my, my point of all this is th there's these chemicals, serotonin and dopamine mostly, that are getting used up as your brain is working and figuring out what to do in these situations. And willpower is part of what uses up those, those chemicals. So it's not uncommon to feel emotionally and mentally depleted during this time of year. It's important to consciously think about where you're going to get that renewal from. Uh, where do you get your serotonin, your dopamine renewal back? Sleep is important. Uh, of course, just having some quiet time, even if it's after everyone's gone to bed or you wake up early and you have a cup of tea, even if it's 10, 15 minutes just for yourself, go for a walk around the block, just remove yourself and give your brain permission to take a break. Just like you would if you were exercising in the gym. And even if you're doing interval training, you're still gonna have that rest interval. You're not gonna necessarily wanna do two leg days in a row, you wanna give that a rest. So think of your brain in a similar way, especially during this time of year when you're asking it to run a marathon. <laughs> The science around this is still very much in flux and it's something I tend to follow a lot. I think this whole idea of a cognitive exhaustion and decision making and how to exercise your brain and how to keep your brain astute as you grow older or you get into routines or you're distracted by all the things that go on around us. So this is something that I stay on top of the science around but I also try to incorporate into my own life. I'll give you a quick example from my from myself <laughs> uh, right before I sign off here. Um, tonight I had been uh, very kindly offered to join a friend of mine at her work happy hour. I'm sure I would enjoy it. This is something I've done in the past and I really like this group of people. And I know if I had waited to make this decision at the end of today, say around five o'clock when the happy hour is starting, I know I would have said, you know, I really would like to go to this. I'll just do it because I've had a tough day and having a cocktail or two sounds good and, and you know, things will get done somehow. But I woke up this morning and I realized you know, I have so much to do to get ready for the weekend and uh, for work and I just was, I'm feeling that like, oh my God, I have to catch up. I'm behind things in my life. Well, what I had to do was, was text her this morning while I was in a state where I still had enough of my, of, uh, replenished my, I, I had just woken up, I was feeling good, I was feeling like I could make good decisions, I had willpower, I had my, my uh, brain chemicals were, were replenished, and so I had to text her right then and say, I'm not coming tonight because I know that's in my best interest and I know that's gonna make me feel better and help me accomplish my goals in the bigger picture this week. So, that's the type of example I'm talking about is, is if you want, if you know you have an important decision to make and you need to take action on it, 
If I had waited to make that decision, knowing that oh, I really shouldn't go to happy hour tonight, but I'm gonna wait and see. For me, if I had done that, I know I would have ended up going out and having a few drinks, which then either would have turned into a few more drinks or I would have lost my motivation and not wanted to come home and do all this stuff. So try to think about imp when you are making important decisions or self-care during this time of year, that um, there are times during the day and they may fluctuate, it may not always be in the morning, it might be after lunch, maybe you've had a good meal and you're feeling better about things, maybe you've just heard a motivational speaker or read a book that inspired you. There are going to be times when you're feeling more strong and more powerful in terms of willpower and cognitive decision making. So try to make identify and make important decisions, commitments during those times. I hope this has helped in some small way. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if you or someone you know might be interested in having me as a public speaker or their personal coach, I do have, still have a limited number of openings available for, for those. And I'll include a link in the, in, the content, in the comments to reach out to me that way. And thank you for joining me today. You've certainly made my, bed, my day better. And I really hope that you have a way to make your own or, and or someone else's day better as well. Goodbye from Denver and happy holidays.